Hey guys, now knives come in all different shapes, styles, sizes, weights and whatnot. What may be completely palatable to you, others will say, I cannot fathom how someone is interested in that. Much like they, um, you know, the preferred partners that we keep in life, we all have our different tastes. Some prefer, you know, tall and skinny, like the uh, Spyderco police there. Others like I'm a little curvy and a little on the heavy side. Nothing wrong with that either. More to hold on to, you know? Some people are into high flash, high veneer, high maintenance, you could even say. And others like petite little things that you struggle to hold on to with two hands at all. Some, bit, some folks like me aren't too bothered at all. As long as it's going to give something back to the equation, I'll give anything a shot. Within reason, I suppose. Anyway, this video today is about the knives that are on the lighter side of the equation. So let's bust out our scale and let's fat shame some blades to start off with. So let's have a look first at what have we got? Zero tolerance. 0 220, 176 grams. Spyderco Police, 128 grams. Rather lean and athletic for our tall, skinny Spyderco Police. What about, what about the Viper Keeper? Complex, fussy, 126. You know, not too bad. Let's um, let's bust out the old. HHA MILF, shall we? Now this MILF, this MILF is going to weigh in at 212 grams. That is definitely on the curvy side. As I said, nothing wrong with that. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever enables you to love. But what I'm talking about today is, what was that figure, 212? I'm talking about four knives that don't even add up to that when you put them all on the scale at the same time. This is Ultra Light Knives Day, folks, and we're going to have a good old look at four good ones. The Almar Falcon, Spyderco Native 5, Benchmade Bug Out, and the Falcon Even U2. So this is a good selection of brands, of styles, of mechanisms, um, really, and you've got a nice variety of price as well. You know, none of these are super cheap. Some of them are overpriced. Some of them are a really, really good buy. And um, you've got a good coverage of steels and all sorts of other things that you can look for variety-wise in knife. In fact, the only common equation they really do have is that they all, all are rather light. Let's sort them, shall we, in order of heaviness. So starting down here and weighing in at a very lean 42 41 grams is the Falk Niven U2. So this is as basic as a pocket knife can get. I mean, it does have a lock, so I guess it could be a little bit more basic with a slip joint lever, but a slip joint lever generally would have to be a, little, be a bit longer. So this is probably about as lightweight as you can make a knife that is relatively full featured. So this little this little rake knife here, this is this is tiny. This is only this is 30 grams, 31 grams. And looking at the two for an extra 10 grams. It's actually quite efficient. You're actually getting a fair bit more of everything and an amazing steel to kick it off with. So this one is in the super gold powder steel. It is just a Zytel handle with a lock back. Very, very basic. There's no pocket clip. You could lanyard carry this, I suppose. This is one of the better blade steels going on the market. Very comparable to, say, ZDP 189. It is laminated, but the core on the side there is a pretty high cobalt, high carbon, very, very good on the edge retention steel. So Falk can even make this. It sells for about 110 Australian dollars. Poke myself there. And um, I think even a bit cheaper in America. I think you get these for about 60 or 70 bucks in the US, which is a great amount of money for a very, very lightweight little knife. The only thing that's probably going to rule it out for some is lack of pocket clip. So moving on to the next most heavy knife. This is the Alma uh, Falcon Ultralight, which weighs in at 43 grams. So two grams extra, which is very, very good use of the weight, seeing as this one actually has a full steel backspacer and it has a same back lock assembly, a little bit thinner on the uh, handle, and it has a pocket clip. So this one's my Carter. 
unlined micata, and then you've got a pretty decent little pocket clip actually, anchors into the, the side of the frame, again on another bit of metal. So I guess the weight savings here are done by having a very thin little blade. So let's have a look at these blades next to each other. It's about a millimetre thinner than the U2, and boy does this thing slice. This is a really different sort of philosophy behind this one, it's very much just that kind of portable little steak knife. This one is probably the most delicate of the bunch, I would suggest. I've cut pretty thick cardboard with this, and I do notice the lock does begin to rock a bit, and this one actually has some irreversible lock rock on it now, um, both side to side and up and down, mainly due to it just being a pin construction knife. You can't open this up, so it, it is going to be how it is when you get it for the rest of your life, and then only deteriorate from there. Something you need to know about as well. Um, AUS 8 steel needs to be better for the price that they are charging. You pay about $150 for this in Australia. Even pretty pricey in the US still. Um, and yeah, you've got um, you know a great design, I feel. Not quite met by the materials. But in terms of sheer performance, uh, it is a really, really good performing knife for your lighter, slicier tasks, without a doubt. However, probably a bit limited scope for your you know, ultralight knife needs. If you are looking to just everyday carry one of these, that's where these two are probably less good options when compared to the next two. So the next one up in terms of weight order is the Benchmade Bug Out. This one weighs 53 grams. So for 10 more grams now over the Alma Falcon Ultralight, you're getting a much more kind of full featured or fully more capable feeling everyday carry pocket knife. Uh, as in it's got a pocket clip, it's got a pretty decent sized handle, which has some thickness to it, not a huge amount still but getting towards feeling more like a normal pocket knife. So very much losing out on compromises more and more. It's got a small stainless steel liner just supporting the access lock mechanism around here. The rest of it is just grivery. So straight up grivery, a little bit of squish to it, as some people point out. Not as squishy as it sort of looks like when you do do the pinch test. It's quite rigid stuff still. S30V on the blade there. It's got a really nice high slicing grind. Nice little swedge there to make it um, both stronger on the tip and also look a bit cooler. Who are we kidding? I love this blue thumb stud here matching the blue handle and the blue backspaces there and there. Very, very basic Benchmade, but very, very well done. And it is truly, you get the Benchmade box. If you've had Benchmade boxes before, usually Benchmades aren't scoping for the weight award. So usually you can feel it bouncing around in the box. This one, you get it from the box. Um, my mate Luke sent me this one to try out. And it is almost like an empty box in hand. It is crazy. Really, really, really mystifying. They've done a great job with weight savings here. It's a decent pocket clip, but the whole, the whole design is very, very lean and efficient. The only thing I don't like is the exposed tang, which I'll always point out. I'm just never going to be a fan of that. Decent lanyard loop there. Probably you're not going to be rap repelling off buildings with the lanyard that's through here because it is quite thin plastic around it, but you know. It's an ingenious way of not using a tube, so they've saved the weight everywhere they can, and it is actually a really, really nice knife, and it is, as I said, not as feeble feeling as this, and more easy to carry, and more ready to carry, and ready to use than this bad boy, because it's got all the modern features, access lock, thumb stud, pocket clip. It's a good one. And last but not least, and probably also comparable to this one, weighing is the heaviest knife, at a 68 grams, so you've got an extra 10 grams on the Benchmade and an extra 20 grams on the Almar and the Falcon even, is the Spyderco Native. But this is definitely the strongest uh, of all of them. So Benchmade access locks, they are strong, but on this one, you're very much relying on the plastic surrounding, which this isn't a super high performance G10 type plastic. I'm sure it's not a bad plastic, but it's um, definitely thinner and definitely not as much. So say just things like getting dropped, things like you know accidentally being, being sat on or, or trodden on, this knife isn't gonna last, um, and the locking mechanism isn't going to be as sort of reliable perhaps as the solid old back lock of the Native 5. Nice thick steel, locks in, very authoritatively, no movement anyway at all, whereas the Benchmade, always going to have some slight movements there. This one's actually pretty tight at the moment, but um, yeah, the, the access lock by definition is going to have a little bit of extra wiggle in it. So yeah, probably if you're after an ultralight knife that's going to be super strong using like a, like a user knife, less fun to play with, then the Native's probably a good choice. This one's an S90V. They come in all sorts of steels. You can get, this is a sprint run, but you can get basic uh, Native lightweights in Maximet, S110V and S35VN. All pretty good choices. I'd probably just go to the S35VN one just to keep it easy on the sharpening end of things as well.
but it's got a decent pocket clip, not as nice as the Benchmade's though, not deep carry. Um, it's got still really, really lightweight to it. Unlined FRN, which is a very strong plastic that I've used extensively on Spydercos, and I have punished severely as well from time to time. Um, I think I've backed a um, trailer over an old Delica I had, and no problems at all. So yeah, uh, just this plastic here is just a little bit less tested than this one, and also just the sheer nature of having Omega Springs in the axis lock probably does cause like long-term durability, and this is long-term durability, you know? So I'm really I'm grasping at straws saying that this one's particularly better than this one. I'm just saying it probably does have a little bit more overall build integrity than this one here. But still, both excellent knives. If I had to choose just one, I probably would just go with the bug out because to be honest, I don't abuse my knives and I do prefer to play with them a bit more than actually probably use them, let's be honest. So yeah, bug out is probably my preferred one. The native might just be the slightly stronger, more um, more boring, but then perhaps more practical and usable one as well, given the forward finger choil, nice full flat grind, um, bevy of sort of slightly better steels available for a very similar price, if not a bit less even than the bug out. Bug out's gonna be the most expensive. This is about $190 in Australia. This to get a S35 one is about 150 in Australia. To get the S90 one ends up costing me about 180 to import it from cutlery shop. Um, and the S110V is about the same price. So you can get a steel that'll probably last almost twice as long on this than this. But you know, those are calculations I'll leave up to you all. So there we go four really cool ultralight knives. Hope you've enjoyed this little chat. Um, hope you've enjoyed seeing them. And I'll uh, see you all in the next video. Bye now. Review to on the on the uh, beg it. <laughs> Review to come on the bench mount. <laughs> bench mount on the bench bug spider mate. Bing bong. <sighs> bench mate bug out. Cheers.